Okay, thank you very much for being here, although sometimes there's some noise in the background. Um, I'm going to present you the agent-based modeling that we are currently working on. Um, the end is on the move. Yeah. So, uh, the interesting thing about the is that it was a species that lived a certain time in parallel with modern humans and at about 40,000 years ago they began to disappear from the landscape. And for this there are various theories why they disappeared, maybe of low mortality, uh, high mortality, low birth rates or competition with modern humans or uh, maybe uh, different theories and um, well, to assess how these factors impacted the, the Neanderthals, um, I think it's good to know how that, or to understand how they moved across the landscape. And for example, if you look, look at the map, that's probably a little bit old map, yeah, maybe <coughs> the data, but just want to highlight that, for example, if you compare early, so called early and classic Neanderthals, uh, whereas the early Neanderthals are the ones uh, older than 130,000 years, and classic ones are the younger Neanderthals. We see there's some difference in the distribution of the sites. Yeah, maybe, of course, because of taphonomy, but it may be also because of changes in land use and mobility of the Neanderthals. And uh, there, there was already an Asian-based model that modeled uh, Neanderthal, or which modeled the expansion of the modern humans into Neanderthal territory, and they looked at uh, several parameters and they compared and they varied the fitness and mobility of the agents. So, what we see here are different agent types ranging from purely modern human to purely Neanderthals, and in between, there are hybrids and there are the ones that are more, Neander more modern human and the others more Neanderthal, and they counted. Yeah, they run the simulation and they counted the number of agents after some time. And what they did in one simulation, in some simulation runs, was make the Neanderthals more fit, increase the fitness. So by the end of the simulation run, the Neanderthals <coughs> increased in number, the Neanderthal agents. And then in another experiment, um, they increased, they, they leave all the parameters the same just change the fitness, uh, change the mobility of the Neanderthals and what changed the Neanderthals got extinct. Of course, this is a model and there are a lot of uh, factors that are not considered in the model. But what we see here or learn from that at least is that in a confined system where we just change the mobility may make a difference between survival and extinction. So I think that's worth to look at the mobility of the Neanderthals. This is the, uh, the model, basically. As all agent-based models, it consists, consists of agents and there are some rules, how they interact, and there's an environment. The agents represent Neanderthal individuals and they move across the landscape and the movement is not totally deterministic, so we have some randomness included and um, a European landscape as the environment. So, how did we create the environment? The environment cons consists of several topographic maps and uh, the basis is the work of our co colleagues uh, Michael Bolos and Michael Merker and also with the support of Christian Sommer who created the maps and uh, what they did is to look at the fossil sites from the Neanderthals and looked at uh, a various number of topographic indices and they grouped the topographic indices into um, uh, factors representing uh, water-related indices or climatic-related indices and strategic indices. And uh, they did a explorative uh, spatial analysis and they found that uh, they found difference between the sites from the early Neanderthals and classic Neanderthals. And in, in that way that, for example, in the classic Neanderthals it seemed uh, strategic, strategic uh, factors seemed to be more important. 
In the agent-based model, um, they, they use some uh, like 50 indices, I think. But for, to start with the agent-based model, we used just uh, five indices, which are which we think were the most important, or which came out to be the most important in the analysis, which are profile curvature, overland flow distance, um, and maximum elevation, and uh, sunrise and wind direction. Yeah. So we have several maps from the topographic indices. From this map, <coughs> um, we calculated a favorability map, uh, which is um, um, calculated from the uh, topographic preferences of the Neanderthals. And um, this is the environment with which the agents interact and how the agents behave. Um, here, for example, if we have uh, randomness 0%, totally deterministic movement of the agents, and for example, we have some favorability values, meaning the higher the favorability, the more, the more, uh, the higher the quality of the patch. And we see in this case, the agent always goes to the patch with the highest favorability. If you have some randomness included, then sometimes, depending on the randomness value between 1 and uh, 0 and 100%, the agent sometimes moves on the patch with a lower favorability value. Yeah, the thing with the randomness is that if we make the movement totally de deterministic, the agents always move to the best patch, they will get stuck in local maxima. That certainly did not happen. So we varied the randomness value, and as you can see, is if you have low randomness value, the patch quality, average patch quality throughout the simulation is relatively low, then at a certain point, with a little randomness, the, the quality increases, and then again, if the movement becomes more random, the average patch quality is uh, getting lower. And for our first simulation run, we assumed that the Neanderthals try to improve, improve their uh, um, patch quality. This is the interface of the model, which is uh, which we programmed the net logo. And here we have some uh, basic simulation settings for running the simulation and for visualization. And um, here we set the basic agent parameters, which is uh, for example, the randomness value or whether the agents represent early or classic Neanderthals. Um, we also implemented some ways to analyze the simulation runs. For example, it's possible to, to generate a, some kind of heat map um, um, which shows which, which one of the patches is occupied more frequently by the Neanderthals. And in this particular simulation run, uh, we see, uh, for example, a wider range in the classic Neanderthals and a more concentrated range in the early Neanderthals. Yeah, just an example of single simulation run doesn't mean anything, um, just to show you that the model can do heat maps. Yeah. And what we also can analyze is the distance to origin. So we have the agents start at a certain point and then we measure over time how they spread across distance and we looked at uh, four different localities or whether the locality makes a difference in the, in the spreading and in this simulation run there seems to be a difference between the range of spreading depending on the location. And what we also can measure is <coughs> how much the groups are starting from a, a group, let's say, of 100 agents, and how much do they separate over time from each other. So we uh, count the number of agent sets. And then, finally, we have the average edge favorability. So whether the agents are able to improve their environment by moving to a good places. Yeah, of course, we also want to compare um, how the movement changes between the early and the classic Neanderthal agents. And 
And uh, again, we see we have just very slight differences in that particular locality. And also the separation between the agents, for, for example, here, the uh, early Neanderthal agents are more spreading, while the classic Neanderthals are just um, yeah, more sticking together, but it's very slight difference, and it's just one simulation run, so no interpretation at all, but just to show you that it can be measured. Yeah. Of course, we have to do multiple si simulation runs to have some idea about the, um, the variability. Yeah. So, and we have the, that was the base model, uh, which consists of the uh, movement according to topographic indices and randomness value. And um, we just recently included um, additional features such as different mobility pattern and population dynamics. Um, here we see an overview about, of the different ways of movement that are implemented in the model. Uh, this is uh, the base, base model, topographic movement, but we also want to test different ways of um, um, home ranges or different um, times of occupation of certain places so that, that they have a home patch where they, they circulate around <coughs> instead of um, searching in the landscape. And then we also included a seasonal, um, a seasonal migration uh, depending on resources changing, changing in uh, the seasons. And also very basic population dynamics uh, with uh, group size and person death rates. These, these factors uh, all need to be tested in sensitivity analysis. So to avoid um, um, to just add up additional features, we, we should test all the features one by one, very careful, and see how is the effect on the, um, the results. We also have to think about the validation of the simulation experiments and the one option would be to compare the movement with the distribution of the fossil or archaeological sites and um, to at least exclude simulation runs that are, are not able to occupy the sites that are um, in the fossil or the archaeological record. So, to sum it up, um, the first, um, to repeat the first simulation runs, uh, we are just very little effect of the, uh, oh, we have, <coughs> maybe there's an effect of the locality where the agents start um, in the, their ability to move and also um, we, see we have to further test the, the effect of the agent type, well, whether there's a difference between the, uh, the early and the classic Neanderthals as they are modeled in the, uh, the agent case model. And the method to, to uh, <coughs> summarize the methods of analysis, uh, we currently have the heat map, we measure distance to origin and separate agent sets, favorability, as measurements to compare different hypotheses. So on the long run, uh, we intend this model to be uh, a method to compare different mobility behaviors that we derive from hypotheses and uh, different kinds of interactions between Neanderthals, between Neanderthals and modern humans, or between uh, different types of Neanderthals, yeah. and also to uh, identify areas that are considered as refugia, or to, um, to test hypotheses about refugia and see if we can reconstruct the uh, refugia and, of course, to set up different scenarios where, where the animals go extinct. So, that is the basic stage of the model. Yeah, if you have questions, please.